aspecto para mí notable de escalofriante y sugestiva belleza logrado por la edición es esa transición en disolvencia entre la imagen del edificio casi cristalizado en su absoluta quietud y la imagen de un mar proceloso de olas encrespadas sobre el cual por sucesiva disolvencia parece caer una lluvia de estrellas. Ya sea por las relaciones gráficas de semejanza o de oposición, los planos amplifican su capacidad de sugerencia. Podría recordarse lo que el mismo Einstein llama montaje tonal, para restaurar la sensación de fluidez en las acciones de las imágenes artificialmente fragmentadas. En otros casos, cierto tipo de edición emplea el criterio de duración de los planos para crear efectos métricos o rítmicos. En el caso de Nakoikatsi, predomina en cambio la edición tonal, no, dis no continua, que usa como criterio principal las relaciones gráficas y pictóricas de las imágenes para crear una relación de significado entre las imágenes así entrelazadas. Parte de ese objetivo en esta película se alcanza por la dinámica con que los diversos modos gráficos de edición se aplican sobre imágenes superpuestas, fundidas, disueltas, entremezcladas, creando atmósferas emocionales sumamente particulares e intensas. Lo tercero que creo hace Godfrey Reyo es acompañar las imágenes con una, una banda sonora la extraordinaria música de Philip Glass, que no cesa y que se convierte en otro elemento creador de atmósfera, de tono y de sentido. La música compuesta opera como catalizador de emociones y marca y acentúa los motivos y los temas que se reiteran a lo largo de la película. Debo decir que estoy un poco overwhelmed. Es difícil para mí responder en completa especificidad a la erudita. Uh, analysis that was given to the films. Uh, uh, for me, please, with all respect, I never like to explain the explanation. It seems redundant to me. So I want to pick up on a couple of things that were said that are, are meaningful to me. Excuse me, I have to find my notes now. It's been a long evening. Um, I want to uh, say, first of all, that Eduardo, for me, captured in a word the, actually, the intention I had for the film, which is to create an artificial world. Not so much to create it, but to observe it. Um, I wish to say that this film, of the three Katsi films, is by far the most difficult. Maybe not for a reason that you're thinking. I want to just point out that this film that you saw tonight is not filmed in the real world. This film is all, it's all computerized, so it lacks a certain organic presence. The other films are lens in the real world. They have the advantage of having an organic presence, which this film does not have because it, it is the result of a computer. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In the case of Koyanis Katsi and Poa Katsi, I'm going to tell you something that's obvious that you must know. When you make a film, you put yourself on location so that you can engage the subject. This film, and this is like now it's going to be a twist of my tongue, The location for Nakoi Katsi is itself already an image. Capito? <laughs> What I'm saying is that in the case of Poa Katsi last night, we went to different countries, we were with real people, we had the sun shining, we had uh, a celluloid base and a chemistry of light on negative. We were in a much more... Uh, capacious, we were, we were in a, in a much more um, uh, offering situation for the public. In terms of Nakoi Katsi, everything is artificial that you see. The images that you see are images, hopefully, that you've seen a thousand times before, either directly or in proxy. These are the images that represent the wallpaper, as it were, of the global world. 
being from the United States, I made particular focus on America because I think with Martin Amos that America is test driving the future. That in that sense, um, I wanted to show when you look at the intensity of the name Nakoi Katsi, each other, kill many, um, uh, uh, war as a way of life, uh, civilized violence, these are not happy subjects. So, in fact, I want to say to the audience that, because uh, I see many of you have come back over three nights, I want to congratulate you for being willing to be punched in your solar plexus <laughs> every night by the intensity of these films. So, bravo for you. I want to also say that, uh, you know, I leave tomorrow, and I feel like, um, you know how to make butter. As a child, I used to make butter. We couldn't buy it. We would, uh, in fact, it was margarine. We would, you know, put the color in, turn it. You keep turning it, and you keep turning it until it gets to the form that you want it to be. I feel like we have created butter here. We have gone around this event three different nights, and I feel like in butter with you. What can I say? Um, so I want to thank you. I want to also thank Miguel and, and his wonderful staff that put this together, that offered me such a wonderful opportunity to come here and, uh, and go ballistics and in front of films that can give you principally an experience. And what you said for me is what the intention of this film is. It's to offer the viewer the freedom of an experience rather than telling them what to feel or think. Um, in terms of, um, let me just find my other note, excuse me. Um, this is also the point, I, one of the points that Augusto made for me, that the film admits to the total openness of meaning. It, it's, the meaning is in the eye of the beholder.